that we do. The first one is called FAST. Actually, FAST stands for Focused Abdominal Sonograph for Trauma. And it's an ultrasound. Every practitioner of uh, ATLS should learn how to do a FAST. It would be advisable if you have the ultrasound available. With experience, we'll be able to do better diagnosis. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage is the next, and a CT scan. And these are especially important in blunt trauma when the need for laparotomy is still being considered. And then you can also order some special x-rays like barium meal, barium swallow. And we also do blood tests, complete blood count, urea electrolytes, serum amylase, coagulation screen, and very important to do also grouping and cross match, and any other indicated tests. Sometimes in some centers, when available, we can do laparoscopy to evaluate any, any injuries further. Focused abdominal sonogram for trauma checks for free fluid in the abdomen. This is the kind of ultrasound that we would see if there is fluid in the Morrison's pouch, for example, which is a common site of fluid pooling in a patient with supine with the abdominal injury. What are the indications for DPL? Yeah, and usually this is done in blunt trauma. We can do this if the ultrasound is not available or CT scan is not available. We can do it in head injury when we want to evaluate the abdomen in a patient who can't elicit uh, peritoneal signs. And in a patient who is intoxicated, patient with spinal, in spinal cord injury, patient with injury to the lower spine or the ribs, and if a patient is going to have extensive x-ray tests or CT scan or going for general anesthesia for another injury, we may need to do DPL to rule out abdominal injury before the patient goes on because that will take more time. A positive DPL is if we aspirate gross blood or GI contents and this blood, if we have to aspirate about 10 mils of blood, if uh, we after instilling one liter of uh, lactated rengas or normal saline, if we get J contents in the aspirate or if we get bile or vegetable fiber, all suggestive of abdominal injury. If we don't, then we can take the aspirate to the lab and if we get 10,000 red blood cells per meal, that's a positive DPL and if we get 500 WBCs per mil, also positive DPL. In a patient in whom we're going to do a laparotomy, it's, there's no point of wasting time on a DPL. And DPL is relatively contraindicated in patients with previous abdominal operation because of likelihood of uh, adhesions and therefore increases the possibility of gut injury. Patients with morbid obesity, for the same reason, it's uh, much more difficult to do DPL. Patients with advanced cirrhosis, these patients might also have uh, cystis. The DPL may give uh, confusing signs. And uh, patients with a pre existing coagulopathy, because we don't want to start them bleeding. CT scan is normally done on patients who are hemodynamically normal and uh, in whom we suspect a specific organ injury or want to evaluate for specific organ injury, especially if this injuries are retroperitoneal or pelvic. Specific injuries can occur in the diaphragm from blunt injuries, and this especially on the left because of the right, this, the liver protects the diaphragm. And on x-ray, we may get a raised hemidiaphragm or blurring of the diaphragm. In penetrating trauma, we may get small tears of the diaphragm. The duodenum is usually injured in direct frontal impact, and uh, we may get blood in the NG tube and air in the retroperitoneum or air under the diaphragm. Double contrast CT would show us a duodenal injury accurately. The pancreas can also be injured in direct blows the same that would also injure the duodenum and commonly it's because of the pancreas being compressed against the vertebral column 
and we have persistently high or rising serum amylase. There are other conditions that could give a serum amylase, but when it is very high, we should suspect pancreatic injury. And a CT scan may show this, but only after eight hours. And uh, another test we could do is uh, ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Interurinary injuries can occur in injuries to the back or the flank, and this especially affecting the kidney. And uh, we might see a chymosis on the flank or around the umbilicus, and there might be hematuria, which might be gross or microscopic. And a CT scan is necessary. Other investigations we could do is intravenous pyelography and renal arteriogram. A small bowel is commonly injured in uh, many in deceleration injuries, which can cause a mesenteric tear. Injuries of the lap belt, and uh, this can be associated with a chance fracture of a vertebra. And uh, DPL is indicated and will show it quite well. These are all mechanisms of blunt injury. And sometimes uh, when you have a solid organ injury, there is hemodynamic instability and a laparotomy is indicated in this case early. And if a solid organ injury is isolated so that we can get a patient who we suspect a commonly liver injury, sometimes there's a splenic injury, we should manage them conservatively and this should be done by the surgeon on the case because uh, the need for to operate might be there still. And when you have a pelvic injury, pelvic injuries can present with the blood in the urethra, blood in the rectum, and rectal examination is very key in this. Then how do we treat abdominal injury patients? All patients need continuous re-evaluation. So we put them on continuous monitoring and we need to reassess the airway, breathing circulation frequently and we also need to repeat abdominal exam, especially in patients we are thinking of conservative management. We need to give them oxygen, we need to give them IV and to monitor them. We need, must maintain room temperature and prevent hypothermia. Tetanus prophylaxis is important and we must also give antibiotics especially those that cover gram-positive and gram-negative and anaerobes, so broad-spectrum antibiotics because of especially gut injury. And a laparotomy, when indicated, should be done early. So how do we dispose of these patients? Emergency laparotomy for situations where it's indicated. Wound exploration, sometimes we, if there's no evisceration, the gut we might just need to explore the wound to find out if it's a penetrating injury. And a penetrating injury is defined as one that has breached the peritoneum. In blunt injury, if we decide to manage conservatively, we must call in the surgeon and admit the patient. And if a patient, we determine that the injury is not severe enough, we can discharge the patient, but this requires also consultation with the relevant surgeons. In summary, therefore, early surgical consultation is important in managing abdominal injury patients. We must resuscitate the patient as hemodynamic stability is very important. We must determine the mechanism of injury from the history and the examination. And the physical examination should be thorough and should be repeated in case we have missed something. And uh, investigations, usually time-saving then if you have an occult injury, the only way we'll find out is by having a high index of suspicion. Remember, abdominal injuries are subtle and require a high index of suspicion. And remember, the indications for laparotomy are well, in penetrating injury with uh, hemodynamic instability, evisceration, and others. Thank you for your attention.